Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Move Zeros. Now this is part of the Leak Code 75 playlist if you are following along. This is a really good problem if you want to work on simplifying logic and building up from there because oftentimes we overthink and overcomplicate and that's when things get really confusing. So what is this problem? Well, we're given an integer array nums and we want to move all zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. Note that you must do this in place without making a copy of the array. So example one, we have 0, 1, 0, 3, 12. Moving all the non-zero elements to the front while maintaining order, we get 1, 3, 12. And moving zeros to the back, we end with 0, 0. Example two, we have just the input with nums of 0. So that's already in the back. It's already in the end. So our output is just going to stay as is. And we have a follow-up because you minimize the total number of operations done. If I just gave you this problem and a paper and pen and asked you to solve it, how would you do it? We're not thinking in terms of code yet. So we have example one, zero, one, zero, three, 12. So we know we want to move all the non-zero elements to the front in the same relative order and all the zeros in the back in the minimum number of operations possible. But we already know what the end state looks like, right? The first non-zero element has to be in this first index. The second non-zero element has to be in the second index and so forth. So what I can do is swap one and zero. Now this operation makes sure that our first non-zero element is in the correct index. It's in that first position. Now I just need to find my next non-zero element and put it in this second position over here. So I loop through every index until I come across it and I just swap it out for that second position. So at this point we have one, three, zero, zero. And I know any non-zero number I see next would be in this next insert position at index three. So I loop through up until I come across it and I just have to swap these two. So now this becomes one, three, twelve, zero, zero. We just modified our array in place, keeping the same relative order in our non-zero elements. So what we want to do is just iterate over every single number in our input nums and keep track of the insert position. So in the beginning, my insert position is going to be zero. So insert is zero. My first non-zero element would be inserted here. Now, as I loop through my nums, so for i in range length of nums, if the number at index i, so if nums of i is non-zero, so if this is not equal to zero, I just want to swap between that insert position. I want to correctly place my non-zero number. So nums of insert and nums of i are just going to switch values. So nums of insert is going to get nums of i and nums of i is going to get nums of insert. Once that is done, I want to move my insert up. The next non-zero element will be in this next position forward. So insert plus equals one. And we don't really need to modify everything. So this is actually it. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, before leaving, we want to do a quick walkthrough of our code line by line so we can see exactly what is happening. In my input nums is the following array, and I just want to go through my code line by line to see exactly what's going to happen here. So the first thing we do is initialize insert to be zero. So I'm also going to mark inserts over here at index zero. This is where we want to put our non-zero element. So now we loop through for i in range length of nums. So i also starts at index zero and we make a check if nums of i is not equal to zero. This is true. This is not zero. So now we're going to swap between insert and i. So nums of insert is going to get what's stored in nums of i, which is three. And nums of i is going to get what's stored in insert, which is also three. And this makes sense, right? This already had our first non-zero element. So it's already in the correct position. Now what we want to do is move insert up by one. This is going to mark that next position where we want to insert our next non-zero element. So we go back in our loop and move i down. i is now at index one. Nums of i is zero. So we don't go in this if condition because we only go in here if it's non-zero. So we go back in this for loop again, moving i down. We're at zero again. Don't go in this if, go back in the loop. i is now at index three and nums of i is five. It's not equal to zero. So we want to swap it into its correct position. So nums of insert is going to have what's at nums of i, which is five. And nums of i is going to get what was in insert, which was zero. We move insert up by one. And this is just to keep track of where we want to insert our next non-zero element. So we go back in this for loop, our index is four and the value at that index is also four. We make a check. It's not equal to zero, which means we want to make a swap between these two. So four is going to go here. Zero is going to go over here and we move insert up by one. So insert is now index three. We go back in our loop, then there are no more indices for us to iterate over. We just went through everything in nums. Now we don't need to return. We are modifying this in place. And as you can see, we correctly modified this in place. Three, five, four are the numbers that were non-zero in relative order in the beginning of our nums, and all the zeros moved to the end. Now, talking about space and time complexity for this problem, since we are going through every single element in our input nums, it's going to be O of n, because if there are n elements, we're going in this loop n times. 
And for space, we're modifying everything in place. So this is going to be constant O of 1. So we just went ahead and solved move zeros. If you want to try out a similar, slightly harder problem, I recommend doing sort colors. That's also a fun little brain teaser. And if you like this video, give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. And like always, I will see you in the next video.